the uh, the weather today is particularly crappy. It's not that it's super cold or snowy. I don't know what it is. Today just feels worse than the last couple weeks where it was like negative 30, negative 40. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting burnt out on all this cold weather. We had like two days that were pretty nice and then just back to this. That sucks. It's actually so cold that it cracked my uh, office window. Like nothing hit the window or anything like that. It just, it cracked it. So I originally wasn't going to post today. I was going to let that uh, like flashback Friday Jeep video kind of be enough. But I figured just for the sake of consistency, I can throw something together. So this is going to be my attempt at something. I'm going to talk about probably three different things. One actually just happened because it's uh, almost four o'clock right now. And that is the Chase and Finnegan race. I'm sure you guys have already heard about that. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with it, Mike Finnegan from Roadkill, his uh, 55 Blasphemy. He's racing uh, John Chase from Hoonigans in his 55 Tri-5 by Fire. I just watched the live stream for that, their first race. They're doing a best two out of three, I'm assuming, since they're doing three races. And uh, it went about like you'd expect. Uh, I know that Chase is like the severe underdog, but I, I'm still hoping to see like a really good race between them. And he's just, he's having a lot of engine troubles. Not that Finnegan isn't, I mean running with no cooling system. But uh, Finnegan made a pretty good pass. I think he went 9.10 at like 1.30 something. And Chase went, I think they said 13.5 at 1.20. Uh, the two other things that I wanted to talk about. One, I kind of want to go over the uh, setup that's on Jack Black right now. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. And uh, I don't know if those people are just reluctant to go back and watch some earlier videos or, or what's up. But I figured I'd go over that a little bit. Not in super great detail, but I'd go over it a little bit just to kind of gloss over things in case any of you guys had any questions. And then two, the other thing that I'm going to do that I don't really do that often not for any real reason in particular. I'm gonna give a couple shout outs to some channels that I would like to see have a little bit more success. I've been fortunate to have what I consider a pretty good success here on YouTube for whatever reason. Uh, I'm at 22,500 in that neighborhood, which is about 22,499 more than I ever thought I'd get to. So it's definitely humbling. So I figured if I can help anyone out um, I'll definitely do what I can. So first and foremost, a lot of people have messaged me asking what the setup is on the engine. And, uh, it kind of astounds me because there was like four or five videos, it seems, about the, uh, engine in the truck. But I'll still go over it. So it is a small block Chevy, a 350 board 60 over, technically a 360. But when you say 360, people think Dodge and they give you weird looks. So a 60 over 350. It has Keith Black 5.9cc dome pistons that sit about 27, 28 thousandths in the hole. I'm using just off the shelf gaskets, head gaskets that are about 40 thousandths uh, thick, compressed thickness. And it has Eagle forged rods and crank. I, th I think the crank is an Eagle. I know the rods are Eagle forged rods. The crank, I don't remember if it was an Eagle or a Scat. I really don't. I know it's a uh, forged crank though. The camshaft is a Comp 305H-10. It's a pretty cheap cam overall if you get just the cam and lifters. The Speedmaster 79 heads are like a real budget head. They're aluminum, 64 cc's. I think they were like real close to 700 bucks from Jegs for the pair, completely assembled. I haven't had enough time to like abuse them and see how they last and how they hold up to things, so I don't want to recommend them to anybody. But I will say, so far, I'm pretty happy with them. I have had a lot of people ask me about those heads, what I think about them. And the machine work actually looked pretty good. Uh, I did go in and check as many things as I could. So far, no complaints. Uh, the truck has a lot of, like, run time on it. A lot of time sitting there idling and just going through the rev range. And so far, it's good. I don't know if we've had it past, like, 6,000 RPM yet, but... Like I said, so far pretty good. The intake is, I refer to it as a knockoff Victor Jr. Some people in the comments have said that they're pretty sure it is a Victor Jr. that's just had some things milled off it. 
I don't want to claim that it's something name brand and then find out that it's not. So I'm just saying it's a knockoff Victor Jr. Could be like a, a Hurricane or something like that. Whatever the eBay brand is. Could be a Hurricane or uh, Pro Products, I think, is another one. Basically, it's a air gap like a mid-rise uh, single plane the headers are inch and five eighths primary long tubes they're just uh i don't remember what brand they are i think patriot maybe they're, uh, they're a cheaper brand they were like 180 bucks i think for the uh full setup and then obviously the summit max efi 500 which I'm really pleased with so far. Still have to get the uh, IAC dialed in and then just drive it around and let the thing learn. But the other day when we had the truck out on the road a couple weeks ago and uh, I was just making small like roll poles in it, the thing felt really good. Uh, the AFR looked good the whole time, so I think uh, it's mostly just like the fine tuning of like the drivability and stuff like that that needs to be ironed out. But I think as far as like full throttle, it's probably safe enough to do that. But I'm sure it's got a little bit here and there that needs to be uh, tweaked. The distributor is just a Summit brand, HEI. Nothing special there. That was 80 bucks. I think that's about it for the engine. Uh, a couple of people have asked about the radiator fans. They're the stock fans from a 2005 Malibu. They fit, they were perfect width, they're, they could be a little bit taller, but right now we got it at the bottom of the radiator, so they're working great. Uh, dual fan, pretty happy with the setup. Now the transmission, a lot of people seem to think that it's still the 4L60 or 700R4, whatever would have been in that truck. I think it's 4L60. I think that was 4L60 and then in like 92 or 93 they switched to the 4L60E, I think. Could be wrong. Um, but a lot of people think that it's still an overdrive transmission. It's not. It's a Turbo 400. A, as far as I'm aware, it's a bone stock Turbo 400 uh, with a torque converter in it. It's supposed to be a 3000 stall. I, it's way tighter than that. It's like a 1400 stall. So I'm probably going to replace that at some point. Not sure when yet. Question about the rear end. Uh, it's a stock 10 bolt, uh, I think 28 spline axles. It has a uh, mini spool and 410 gears in it. I'm planning on running that for as long as I can. Once that blows up, I might look into like a 9 inch or maybe a Ford 88. Those have been holding up to a lot of power. What tires are on the truck? It has 295 65 15s on the back. I think they're like 30 inch tires, something like that, 30, 31, around there. And on the fronts, I think they're 225.70s or 225.75 15s, one of those two. And then like I said in the last video, the suspension's pretty much the last part before we can start testing the truck. And then obviously just waiting for the weather to clear up. There isn't much left to do to the truck. Obviously there's going to be a bunch of stuff down the road. But I wanted to real quick talk about like the next project. All right, so here's kind of what I'm thinking. Once we get the truck to 90, 95%, whatever it is, once we can't do anything more to it until the weather clears up, we move our attention to the bike that you've seen in the background of some of those videos. That is my brother's bike. It is a 1987 Goldwing. And he wants us, my dad and I, to uh, completely like go through it, uh, fix the brakes, make it run right because it was running on two sometimes three cylinders if he was lucky uh repaint it i think redo the seat maybe different bars uh pretty much just go through the whole thing fix whatever needs fixing make it look neat and then uh i don't know if he's gonna come up here and get it because he lives down in texas uh, a little north of dallas i don't know if he's gonna come up here and get it or if we're going to meet him somewhere uh, the last couple of years we've been meeting him in Tennessee, riding around the tail of the dragon. So what I want to do is do videos about that because that's not money out of my pocket. That's something that uh, I think I can just make good entertaining videos that you guys will enjoy. It's still going to be mechanical content. Uh, there will be some painting. I'll be able to take a little bit of a step back. Hopefully that means the videos will be better. Uh, we'll get my brother's bike done. Hopefully with good content. And I do want to do a little bit more motorcycle stuff on the channel. I've mentioned a few times I've got a 91 Electroglide. 
I've had a ton of bikes. Uh, so I do want to start sprinkling in some bike stuff here and there. Uh, still going to keep the trucks on channel, of course. RX-7, all that. Uh, I just want to branch out a little bit more here and there. And in this case, <laughs> I just need to recoup some money. Been spending way too much on that truck. And speaking of spending money, you know who just picked up a couple more project cars that I'm pretty jealous of? Dick Ham. If you haven't seen his stuff, go check him out. I think he's at like eight or 900 subscribers. Uh, the dude does a lot of cool stuff. He has an LS swapped pacer that I'm pissed about because I've been wanting to do a pacer for a while. He just picked up another pacer. He just picked up a notchback fox body that looks pretty clean. I'm super jealous of that. I've been talking about how I want to do another Fox body someday, and then he rolls out with that thing. And he's doing, I think, a 62 Nova with an LS in it for his fiance. Uh, the dude's just doing a lot of cool stuff. And funny enough, Dick's one of those people that actually made me want to start doing videos. I was watching his stuff like a year, year and a half ago, whenever it was, and I was like, man, this guy's cool. He's doing some cool stuff. I kind of want to pick up a camera and start filming some things. So I think it'd be great to help him out as best I can and see his channel grow. So I think a lot of you guys would be super interested in uh, the stuff he's doing. So if you haven't, go check out Dick Ham. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. And the other one that I want to talk about is Jason, old car auto guy. Uh, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, you should definitely check him out. Uh, every Thursday, him and Straight Six fan Grant Tommy do a uh, like a live stream, and it, it's super. The thing I like about it is it's super inclusive. They call it a like a YouTuber hangout, and like I said, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, check them out. It, they're super community oriented, and they all try to help each other out as best they can. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that by giving. Uh, Jason a shout out old car auto guy. I'll have his link down in the description, too I'm hoping by giving him a shout out it can it can kind of help out everyone there. They're all uh, To some degree different automotive youtubers. They all kind of have their own thing. I've seen a few of their videos uh, A little bit here and there. There's a bunch of guys in that little community that they're building and uh, again, I think it would just be cool to see them grow, help them out as best I can. I'll try to get everybody's links down in the description below. Um, but I think that's probably going to do it for today's video. I don't want this to run too long since there's nothing happened. Um, but like I said, go check them out. Old Car Auto Guy, Dick Ham, Straight Six Fan 2, uh, all of them. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And uh, I'll see you next time.